Jude, verses 17 on to the close. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the capital S spirit, sensual, led by their senses. And this wisdom and the wisdom, there are two wisdoms. There is the wisdom that comes from God, and there is the wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay? But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference. Compassion. Some have compassion. What does that mean? Good example, the Philippian jailer who had godly sorrow, you wicked antinomianist, pond scum devil. He had godly sorrow. If he had worldly sorrow, he would have killed himself, okay? But the Philippian jailer, you notice Paul didn't like, uh, have you been broken? No, Paul didn't do that. Why? Because the Philippian jailer was broken. He had godly sorrow, okay? Paul didn't need to bang him over the head with anything because he was already broken because of godly sorrow, okay? And if some have compassion making a difference and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh, Shimon the sorcerer, who, interestingly enough, the stupid, free grace, antinomianist, pond scum, devil likes you to believe that Shimon the sorcerer, you know, in Acts 8, because he believed he was, no, he was never saved. He was never saved. And uh, Peter said, uh, your money perished with thee uh, because thou thought that thou could, uh, that the uh, gift of the Holy Ghost could be purchased with money. Okay. Peter uh, spoke to Shimon the sorcerer in a manner of fear to instill the fear of the Lord. But what did Shimon the sorcerer do? It's like, you pray for me that none of these things happen to me, like you said. See, Shimon the sorcerer wasn't saved. Okay? Remember that. Remember that. The Philippian jailer had godly sorrow, not worldly sorrow. That's why Paul didn't preach to him repentance, because the Philippian jailer was already broken through godly sorrow. And Shimon the sorcerer was never saved, okay? <laughs> but in 1 John 5, in 1 John 5, verses 1 on to verse 8, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. Okay? Now, a lot of these Christians will say, oh, they believe Jesus is the Christ. But you know what the problem is? They're usually a Trinitarian, which believe in one God comprising of three persons. You read First Philip, uh, Philip, uh, excuse me, First Thessalonians chapter 5, spirit, soul, and body. You read Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Dividing asunder of the spirit and soul and uh, the bone, joints, and marrow. That's a body, okay? A person is a spirit, soul, and body. And the Trinitarian tells you, they, they tell you that three or one plus one plus one equals one. Now, you know, there are some, there's a dear brother of ours, a sweet brother of ours, who is basically a mathematician, will tell you that there is a mathematical equation where you can come up with that thing but here's here's the here's the thing about that okay you have to get very complex and technical when you try to find a mathematical equation where one plus one plus one equals one no 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 no, no. okay that's making difficult the simplicity of christ it's simple it's simple god uh you know who god is one god comprised of spirit soul and body okay Verse 2, by this we know that we love the, love the children of God when we love God and, God and keep his commandments. 
For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even, hey Scott, hey Scott, even our faith. <laughs> Wicked devil. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Trinitarian, well, he is the Son of God, but see, they equate that as one of three persons in a satanic trinity. Listen, listen. You're a Trinitarian, you do not believe in the right God. You do not have the right God, okay? If you do not have the right God, you cannot have the right gospel. You understand? This is he that came by water, natural birth, and blood, blood shed on the cross, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, meaning natural birth, okay? That doesn't mean baptism, okay? Every child born from, of the matrix, the water breaks, okay? That's what that's talking about. And blood, okay? The blood shed on the cross reference there, okay? This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the capital S Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit, capital S, is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Soul. Okay? The Word, capital W, which was made flesh. And the Holy Ghost, the Spirit. And these three are... One, one God comprised of spirit, the Holy Ghost, soul, God the Father, body, the Word made flesh, not three persons that make one God. That's heresy, that's satanic, and that's devilish. It's evil. If you're a Trinitarian, you do not have the right God. If you do not have the right God, you do not have the right gospel. You can preach the right gospel, okay, sure. But if you do not have the right God and believe in one God and three persons, uh, hello? Okay? And there are three that bear witness in earth. The capital S Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. These three agree in one. Mm. Mm. You know... There are those out there who believe, the, who know the truth about the Godhead. And yet, you know, they kind of, they kind of sissyfoot it in a way. What am I talking about? Okay. I'm going to give you an example. There are those out there who rightly tell you that, for example, that the word rapture is not in scripture. And it's not. It isn't. And that the actual scriptural terminology for it is the redemption of the purchased possession or the catching away of the body of Christ for the time of Jacob's trouble. Now, um, you are not going to find the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble verbatim in scripture. No, you are not. You are right about that. But you will find the redemption of the purchased possession in scripture. Okay? That is scripturally what it is called. Okay? There are people who know that and will remind you of that, but because, well, people don't know what you're talking about, they'll do things like you continue to use the word rapture because they don't know what you're talking about. Well, whose fault is that? Huh? Whose fault is that? Rome, yes. But you know the truth. Why don't you implement it? Hmm? Why, why, why are you dumbing it down so people can understand you, huh? Yeah, yeah. Same thing with the Godhead. There's only one God. Okay, I cut my finger, obviously. There's only one God. And he is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Here's your trinity. Okay? To hell with the Trinity. The Trinity is satanic. Okay? One God and three persons is a lie. You, look, dude, you don't have the right God. 
Okay, you don't. You're a Trinitarian. You're a staunch Trinitarian. You twist the scriptures to uh, put together this one God and three persons blasphemy. Um, you're in trouble with the Lord. Okay? You are in trouble with the Lord. Okay? And, well, God's triune nature. You know, uh, Godhead, Trinity are the same. No, they are not. No, they are not. Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Spirit, the Holy Ghost, soul, God the Father, body, the Word made flesh. Okay? Trinity and Godhead are not the same thing. They're not. And you know what? Like we read in Jude, sometimes when it comes to this, brethren, uh, some are very more, more receptive to hear the truth than not. Because, like, you know, in several videos, uh, the, one, the one Catholic Bob guy, it's like the Trinity is meant to confuse us. It's meant to confound us, he said. Oh, uh, well, God is not the author of confusion. And, you know, you try to wrap your head around the Satanic Trinity, which is a lie in the first place. And, and, and I challenge all of you, every single one of you, what was the very first doctrine taught by the Church of Rome? The Trinity. Look that up yourself on your own time. Historicity of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? Historically, their very first doctrine that they came out with. One God and three persons. Okay? So centuries of lying to people about who God is. Hitler once said, if you tell a lie often enough, loud enough, and long enough, sooner or later they're going to believe it. Ta-da! With the Trinity. Okay? And yes, Rome, Satan is the culprit for that. Okay? And there are people out there, brethren, uh, brethren that we will encounter, who will be receptive to the truth, because it's like, wait, 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 wait. And the, the Muslims are a perfect example of this. You know, I, you know, there is a mathematical equation, apparently, um, where you can come up with 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 1. But see, that, you have to get very complex and technical, and that's not what God would have would have us to understand him that you have to know like calculus or some kind of uh, Chinese algebra or something to have a grasp of who God actually no no that, that's a stupid no 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 one God comprised of spirit soul and body you and I are made in the image of God. Uh, Brother Alexander B. Hartley in the last video made a beautiful comment about that. Uh, I think I, that was the one I pinned in the uh, uh, comment section. But we're made in the image of God. We're not God, but we have a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? All right? But like I said, there are some out there who just, and especially with Catholicism, and, and again, people, people. Rome has everything wrong. Okay, don't we, there are a few things that Rome does get right. Really, yeah. Uh, there was a guy named Paul. There was a guy named Peter. There was a woman named Mary. And there was a Nazarene <laughs> by the name of Jesus. Okay, yeah, they got those right, the names. But everything else they got wrong. And it, it's, so, it's, it's so baffling to me. Uh, there are uh, you Christians out there who will go at Rome but yet you're Trinitarian. <laughs> what, what do you do with that? <laughs> it's like, okay, okay. <laughs> under the, in the dictionary under redundant, it says to see redundant. You know, it's like, come on, dude, give me a break. <laughs> Takes my breath away. But like I'm saying, there are those out there who are receptive to the truth because, you know, even logic tells you that, you know, one plus one plus one, hey, you're right, Muslim, equals three. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. That's satanic. Um, yeah, and like I said, I've encountered people who are, you know, that, that makes sense. A lot more sense than that stupid trinity, you know. And I don't 
do this, but you know, I've done things while tar- talking to Christians about Trinity, about the stupid Trinity. I've done that in front of Christians talking about that. This, <clears throat> when talking about the Trinity, I've done that. That that oh, don't don't do that. Okay, I don't fret, man, and I can handle myself. Okay, <laughs> don't you do that. But um, I've done that before. It gets their attention. Some safe with fear. Okay. Then you have these militant Jesuit coadjutor Catholic devils. Um, like I said, every single um, free gracer that I have ever, ever encountered, every single one of them is a Trinitarian. Go figure. But these guys who staunchly defend the Trinity and um, uh, will take out a shotgun to shoot you when it's like, well, Jesus is the Father, they're like, Ch-ch-ch-ch. Jesus is not the Father. It's like, whoa, dude, <laughs> whoa. Um, I, I have encountered, you know, I have encountered that kind of hostility. And see, that's a different type of spirit there. That's a different type of spirit, okay? I mean, that really is, that really is. <laughs> but again, some safe with fear. Brethren, we got to remember that over the centuries, Rome, the Roman Catholic Church, has told the lie of one God in three persons. And they told that lie long enough, loud enough, okay? (laughs) And people have now been ingrained in their head that the God who is Rome Rome has everything wrong right okay everything is wrong with the Church of Rome Rome is Satan's church right but yet Rome has at its core thing one God in three persons right give me a break dude give me a break that's insane that's absolutely insane that's nonsense that's blasphemy But see, you and I as saints, we have to have grace for people, okay? Like I said, I've encountered quite a few people talking about the Trinity where I've uh, spat on the ground. It's like one plus one plus one equals three, not one God and three persons. And, you know, I had some very colorful conversations that way. But we have to have grace, brethren. We really, really do. Because, like I said, Rome has told the lie often enough, loud enough, and long enough that Christianity, which is not the faith that was once delivered onto the saints, that Christianity bases its thing on one God and three persons. It's stupid. It's it's absolutely stupid. You and I as saints, we know this. But most people, they don't. We have to have grace for that. We, we really do. We have to have grace for them on that. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, the Lord guides you in your witnessing when, if that ever comes up. Okay? Uh, but just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. I know a lot of the brethren that I have talked to uh, about, about this, what you know, about the Godhead versus the Trinity... Um, a lot of the brethren is like, dude, it, it's, you know, one God, spirit, soul, and body. It's so simple. It's like, I know, I know. We have to have grace for them, brethren. We have to have grace. And a lot of the people, a lot, not all of them, a lot of the people that I have encountered, not all of them, not all of them. But a lot of them have not been receptive and they're quick to throw you off as a heretic because, you know, you deny the Trinity. It's like, not only do I deny it, but here, (laughs) there, there's your Trinity. I spin on your Trinity. Don't, don't do that. (laughs) Okay. Don't, don't do, don't do as I have done. Don't do that. Okay. (laughs) Okay, like, like I told you before, I don't fret men. I, I, I don't, <laughs> I'm not afraid of people. 
um, but and also I know how to handle myself and we're not supposed to be brawlers anyway okay we're not supposed to be but um, sometimes you have to be especially with something about who God is sometimes you have to be a little gruff with people sometimes you don't with some have compassion making a difference others save with fear Pulling, their, pulling them out of the fire. So, just a, little, just a little reminder for you, dear brethren, about that, about showing grace unto people about this thing, because it's, for us, it's a losing battle. But at the end of the day, the victory belongs unto the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be the one who wins. And that's, our one God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. So, um, Lord willing, we are going to be focusing a little bit more here. Lord willing, it's up to him. Uh, we're going to be focusing a little bit more on the Godhead Trinity thing. Because, you know, you, you might have the right gospel. Okay, you might have, uh, you know, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, what are you repenting of? Your self-righteousness. You're being a man or a woman, taking responsibility. You put Christ on the cross. Get the hell scared out of you. And in that one moment where that happens, you, the lesser, can't wait to call on the name of the Lord. You can't wait to do it. Okay, you might have the right gospel. But if you do not have the right God, people, <laughs> okay? It's like you, you got yourself a gun for home defense, but you ain't got no bullets. And a gun without bullets is a hammer, okay? All right? You might have the right gospel. You might preach, you might even preach the right gospel. Okay? That, that's better than some things, yes, but I'm telling you, if you don't, have the right God in the first place. If you are holding to the one God in three persons, uh, uh, okay? And usually, usually, let me put it to you this way. I have not encountered someone who truly has the true gospel who is a trinitarian uh I'm, I'm not saying that they're not out there but i mean again every trinitarian that i have encountered they're always off on something about the gospel okay why they don't have you don't have the right god <laughs> if you don't have the right god <laughs> you, you, everything's messed up okay <laughs> so Anyway, like I said, like I said, we're going to be focusing a little bit more on that because that's something that, um, you know, not everyone's going to, you know, not everyone wants to hear the truth. But, you know, we got to be speaking the truth before the Titanic goes all the way down. And that's our calling. So anyway, I'm back at the apartment. Just wanted to make this quick video. Thank you, brethren. We love you. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.